this watercolor. I have a 14 by 18 sheet of, uh, 14 by 20 um, sheet of watercolor paper that I've painted on and I have a 14 by 18 panel. So matte medium, you notice I have the marked in the corners. Matte medium, The gloves are a really good idea because the matte medium doesn't come off your hands very well. Do a nice even coat. you've coated this then coat the front of the, the front not the sides of the cradled panel and then we'll get on to the next step okay now we've got the panel coated and the board so I take the board and put it down you'll notice I have the lines for the corner there I put it down as close to that corner as possible Get it all evenly lined up. Okay, once that is done, I turn it over, make sure that I've got a clean surface to work on because you do not want your glue, your matte medium, on the front of your watercolor. It will damage it. Okay, so we put it down, oops, excuse me, that's not what we do, we put it down this way, then we get, <coughs> get my clean piece of wax paper, and I use a roller, and I roll from the center out, this gets rid of any lumps, it also gets rid of any air pockets. If you get bubbles underneath and it dries, you're not going to get them out. So this is the you want to make sure. That it's nice and flat. Okay, now I'm going to pick it up. Turn it over. Make sure I've got a clean surface to turn it over onto. Alright, there we are. Now, make sure that your corner is still in place. And then, I weight it down with bottles of water. Just bottles are safe, I fill with water. Um, you get a lot of weight this way, and it's really inexpensive, and you're not gonna damage your valuable library books. <clears throat> and there you have it. I actually might get another bottle or two and put them in the middle, but that's it for now. Now it has to dry completely overnight. Thing, and I've left it to dry this way up for
for a little while so the surface is completely dry. For this next step, I'm going to need sanding blocks um, and something to um, touch up the edge. So either a bone or a spoon. And here I have a scalpel type, very, very sharp knife. And I'm just going to cut the excess off. Don't pull at it, just take it off all the way down. If you pull, you're likely to take some of your image as well. Try not to take any of your cradle panel with you as you're doing it. Now it's trimmed all the way around, but there's, you can see the edge is raised a little bit along the edge. So here's where I found that a teaspoon works really well. And what I do is I just hold it down on the edge and I just push it down all the way around carefully. Now what I'm going to do is take a sanding block and I'm going to work all the way around. Normally I would do this outside. It's difficult for me to film it outside. I will clean it all the way around, taking off any built up um, matte medium glue. Um, and once it's completely clean, it's ready to varnish. So I'll finish this off and then I'll join you at the next step. and we have it mounted and we get on to the really exciting part which is varnishing the watercolor so for that we need basically we start with the board with the watercolor attached we need a foam brush we're using golden polymer um, varnish uh, gloss polymer varnish um, and I have that mixed in a container according to the proportions on the jar Okay, so even though you have sprayed your watercolor previously with a spray varnish, it is still possible, because this is a water-soluble varnish, it is still possible at this point for your watercolor to run. So be very careful with um, this step. You get the varnish on, you get it on quickly, you uh, manipulate it as little as possible. And so here we go. So I'm going to put a puddle on in the middle, and which is more than adequate to cover the surface area and the sides. And I'm going to just sweep it around from the center out and cover the entire surface while 
not overworking it. Um, it is important, really important, that your brush is dry before you put it, uh, before you use it, because otherwise it's going to add um, liquid to your varnish and dilute it, and then you're more at risk of having it run, so which is something we don't want. So now we're going to check for drips, and I'm making sure that there aren't any bubbles around the edge. And that's it, we've got the first coat on. Now we need to follow that, as soon as it's completely dry and your brush is dry, we need to follow that by at least three more coats. Uh, if you, this will have a varnished edge, which is I find quite attractive. If you wish to finish your edges in any other way, like with acrylic paint, uh, you really need to do your edges first and then once the edges are finished then stick your watercolor onto the board. Otherwise you're going to get little bits of acrylic paint all around the edge of your painting and that's not going to be very attractive and it's really hard to get it off. So that is what we have um, and three more coats and then I'm going to talk about how you present the work after that. Now we have our painting finished. It's got four coats of varnish and it's varnished on the edges so it can either be hung this way, put a hanging set on the back and put bumpers on it, or it can be put into a front-loading wooden frame. Like this. And I think that's what I'm going to do with this one. But before that, after you've done your four coats of gloss varnish, there are some alternatives for what you do at the end. If you don't like the sheen that um, the gloss varnish produces, you can put on one coat of uh, polymer varnish, and this is the matte varnish. Um, this tends to make it quite flat, so I don't do that anymore. So after I've put on the gloss varnish and let it completely dry, um, I have been putting on some of this wax medium, and I just work a little bit into a soft cloth and um, work it onto the surface and then just polish it up. And I find that gives a, a finish that doesn't shine, and uh, I prefer it to the, the flatness of the mat. Okay, so that is one way of doing it. If you finish it and you want to, this is a 10 by 10, and I've actually finished the edges so that the edges have kind of a wood grain on them, which I thought went really well with this painting, and I'm hanging it up like that without any frame at all. I have another small painting here. This is an eight by eight. Um, I have varnished this, I've put the wax medium on the front, and I've put it into a front-loading frame, and that's how I'm going to present that. So that gives you some options for what you're going to do. Um, another, uh, we have, there's the wooden drop-in frames, but there's also a metal drop-in frame. This one I got from Opus. The advantage of this is it's really easy to mount your cradle panel on it because it has holes for um, holes for your screws. The other thing is this comes in kits so you can get two of your horizontal side and two of your vertical side and it gives you a lot of um, choice as to size. Uh, there for the cradled panels, there aren't drop-in frames or front-loading wooden frames for all of the sizes, so this might be a really good alternative if you want to have a frame and there is no wooden one available. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video and please let me know uh, how it works for you and happy painting!